hello, everybody. You've reached the Metals Experience. I am Spectacular, the Silver Stack here, and I'm here with... Salivate Metal. Greetings, members, one and all. Sal, I know you like instruments, so I decided to pop out uh, that thing right there. A little xylophone action. I love it. The only thing I have to provide any musical accompaniment would be this. Oh, little ping test? Little ping. A little pinging for my little copper five-ounce little Aztec uh, around here that's uh, very well tarnished and smells terrific, by the way. You love that copper smell. Ooh, that smell. Copper, by the way, like most metals, there you go, you've got one. But yours is in a capsule protected from the oxidation from the air and your fingers, but that's a beautiful piece indeed. And copper is a metal that if exposed to the elements, such as the air and your fingertips, the oils from your fingers will react and it will emit an odor that some people find disgusting and some people find pleasing. I kind of like it. I personally cannot stand when copper gets on my fingers. Like when I used to do coin roll hunting and uh, messed around with a bunch of uh, scents, um, I had to wash my hands almost immediately. It's very just... Not repulsive, but it's just, I don't want it on my fingers, you know? <laughs> oh, I'm with you. I, I don't like it on there too much, but I kind of like that smell, you know? I mean, and not all the time, but just, I'm, I'm going to smell this right now just for the fun of it. Ah, yes. Let me smell mine. Hold on. Very plasticky. Very, very plasticky. That's right. Yours is well protected. Mine is not. And I'll put it right there so you can see it again, because mine guess- is... Uh, anybody that don't know what we're doing here on the metals experience, this is like episode episode three. Now we're, we're really getting them up there. Um, but we just talk about precious metals, silver, gold, coin collecting, uh, what's going on in our hobby. And I'm here with Salivate metal who, you know, has his own YouTube channel. Definitely check him out. And he does a really good job over there. Um, I, I like to say that on his channel, it's like the, uh, the, uh, the Mecca, that's where we all go and we all congregate right there on his channel. Um, and his lives, but um, we're just going to talk about some things today and, uh, you know, precious metals, coin collecting, and that's what we do here. And you've seen that we already started with some copper. Um, Sal, I know that you had mentioned to me that you wanted to talk about the U.S. Mint. Yeah, there's the U.S. Mint. Um, there's this article on numismatic news and son of a silver stacker and and several others have talked about it. Uh, Louis Silver, and I think Silver Wolverine as well, about What's going on at the U.S. Mint? They've canceled the uh, the the Morgan dollars for this year. They were going to be a Morgan and, Pro- and Peace dollar that were going to be proof this year. And it's a program that the United States Mint uh, is doing based off of some um, leeway in the legislation that allows them to continue doing minting these coins. Um, and they found out that they couldn't secure the blanks. Uh, to be able to produce these this year. The deputy director of the U.S. Mint said that they could not do it. And there's a classic example that you see Spectacular has right there. And uh, so there's some speculation. What is going on? You know, and it's okay to speculate or speculate in this case, right? Spectaculate. And and so we're wondering what the heck is going on at the U.S. Mint. And and um, I re- recently posted a video that I kind of have questioning the narrative of, of why they're not able to get these blanks um, because they have to meet the demand of the public for the American silver eagles. That's mandated, but they also have to provide, uh, you know, the, the blanks at a certain what they call world recognized price. But that's kind of odd language. So I'm the interpretation that some take is that they can't pay more than spot. But I'm kind of questioning that because it just doesn't make sense that the U.S. Mint would require any contract or any or anybody to produce something without making any money on it, um, because you have manufacturing costs in order to create the blanks. Uh, they've got to be obviously machined and manufactured before, before they get to the mint. That is a cost above the world market price, whatever that world market price is. Um, and so how do you calculate that? Where does that come into play? And, um, and, and I just have not been able to see uh, where this is coming from. And then it leads us back to the question, why is this happening? My guess is it's probably the supply chain issue that still seems, seems to be haunting us uh, today. And it's affecting 
Um, I mean, there's still ships off the coast of Los Angeles, off the port of Los Angeles that have not docked yet. Um, and, you know, there's obviously people still not fully employed or back to the regular employment back yet. You know, we're still reeling from some of this stuff. It's, um, so I don't know. My guess is that's a part of it. And then obviously, on top of all that, there's been unprecedented demand for silver from uh, those of us who want to accumulate it. People are paying $40 for a silver eagle these days. Um, and so when they when they are happily paying $40 for a silver eagle and demand is rising uh, for it, um, then the mint's going to have trouble getting those blanks um, in order to produce them fast enough and they've got their own issues with with COVID-19 apparently still having some effect on, on and because that was the excuse by the way COVID-19 was excuse that the mint used for not getting the uh the the blanks for the Morgan dollars for those of you who don't know the Morgan dollars um and the peace dollars use the same exact planchet size for the commemorative coins which are also mandated by law to be created by a certain amount uh, up to a certain mintage. Uh, so they've got to prioritize those because that's what's mandated by law. You know, a, a one-off poor piece like you see before you here on Spectacular side, that is something that's created by hand with love um, on a one-by-one -one basis, you know, one-on-one -on -one basis. And, uh, but the United States Mint, what they're doing, they've got to spit these planchets out. They've got to mint them fast. And the Silver Eagles, especially, they're the most popular silver bullion coin in the world. And uh, so a lot of those are selling and I, a lot of people are buying them, even at these crazy premiums, which is, I know I'm not, the ones you see before you hear that I got are the last ones that are really bought in 2021 when the design changed, because I was kind of just curious to see what they would look like. Of course, these are kind of milky, uh, but uh, they don't have much more than that. I'm not really stacking as much, definitely not the Silver Eagles with the prices where they are at now. But anyways, what do you have there, Spag? Is that well, a... This, um, this is a tube. Um, you know, I'm kind of like with you, man. I'll get a few Eagles, but I'm not stacking them entirely. Uh, just to go back and comment a little bit. First of all, isn't that crazy that your brand new Eagles have milk spots? <laughs> like that? That's Insane membrane, yes. That's too much for me. Um, yeah. Also, with the supply chain, so... You know, we heard that the Morgan dollars are being canceled in 2022. Uh, these are fake Morgan dollars, by the way. I don't even oh. don't even don't even draw. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember your video. Yeah, <laughs> these are totally fake. But these are an example. Um, but I mean, yes, we all think immediately we go like, oh, oh, they must be short on silver. And then, you know, they came out and they said, hey, it's it's the blanks. Um, but yeah, just like you said, you know, everybody's demanding silver like crazy right now. Uh, my local shops, as soon as silver comes in, not that they can't get it, but when it does come in, it's gone almost immediately. They have to buy new stuff. It's constantly being turned over. Um, so, I mean, yeah, the silver blanks are going to be tough to get. But think, they didn't go crazy and build a bunch of more machines in order to create these blanks, right? Because it takes a machine to do that. Uh, when I melt silver like this right here, I'm not getting it perfectly round into a nice blank form in order to, you know, stamp it out. It just comes out just crazy like this, just almost, you know, just wild. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, they perfect blanks. And so they had to have the machines to do that. And maybe they just didn't go, hey, we need this X many more machines in order to, uh, you know, fill this demand that's coming out with these, you know, the regular Eagles. And then now the Morgans got to come out. And it also is a good thing to mention, too, that these coins are like an act of Congress. So, you know, it's 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 interesting all the way around what's going on. Um, but I think, you know, it's just the demand is so intense that the machines basically couldn't keep up. That's right. It sure is. And and, you know, and you have to look at and think about what the U.S. Mint is mandated to uh, do by Congress and what they are permitted to do by legislation. In other words, the, the legislation may permit them to create Morgan dollars on an annual basis, but they don't have to. So mandated Eagles, permitted Morgans. Yep, that's right. So we are losing what we don't necessarily have to have. Right, or what the mint is not required to produce. Right. 
you know, yeah. uh, with these Eagles. Uh, crazy enough, Sal, um, a guy from work, he said, hey, uh, I had these Eagles that I got, you know, real cheap, 2022s. And I'm like, oh, really? Like, how cheap did you get these things? He said $10 a piece. Oh. And I told him, I said, hey, listen, man. I said, those are probably fake. And he <laughs> says, no, no, I don't think so. It you know, came from a website. And I go, what's the name of the website? He goes, ah, it starts with a B. I said, please bring one in for me. Next day, he brings one in, Sal. And just immediately by looking at it, it's, it's just missing the rim and stuff. I just noticed immediately like, hey, this is not real, buddy. And then yeah. it was in like this, uh, this capsule. And I said, let's take it out of the capsule if you don't mind, because I want to look at the read. And I explained to him the anti-counterfeit measure was the missing read. And sure enough, not a single missing read. Right. Yep. And how often do people look at the reads anyway? I think that it's a that was such a poor decision on the U.S. Mint's part to to do to do the missing read, which, by the way, they they only care about their one ounce silver coins and one ounce gold coins. They don't care about the half ounce gold or the quarter ounce or 10th ounce gold because they don't have a missing read, which means uh -huh. that if people are looking for missing reads uh, and they don't know that, then they say, oh, there's no missing read on the quarter ounce gold eagle. It's fake. You know what I mean? Look again. Huh? You might want to look at just the details of the coin. How about that? Well, yeah, but I'm, I'm just saying if, 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 if somebody is focused on just that missing read, they may not care about the details of the coin. In other words, the U.S. Mint has made another mistake in, in this uh, doing doing this, uh, putting these missing reads on only the one ounce size coins and not the fractional gold. Um, have they come out with an excuse or why they didn't do no, anything? No, there's no information at all about it. I remember early on, because I covered it on my channel, uh, about these, there were supposed to be multiple levels of security. Uh, one, an overt, uh, an overt, uh, in other words, something you can see, um, security feature. That's obviously now the missing read, which I think is a horrible um, version of it, or, you know, it's a representation of, of a missing read. And then the second and third levels of security are levels that can only be um, detected by those who are dealers, maybe, who would kind of like what the Royal Canadian Mint does with their bullion DNA. Uh, if you're an authorized dealer, you can get a machine that can read the uh, any kind of maple leaf, and it will tell you that it's genuine or not based off of a unique signature uh, of, of metal on the coin. And uh -huh. likely that signature is going to be within the, the little maple leaf privy that's on there. And uh, so that is one way to be able to detect that's uh, on the secondary level, which is a covert security feature. Then there's a tertiary security feature that only the Secret Service would have to be able to tell whether or not an eagle is fake or not. We've not heard any, anything about that ever since it was proposed by David Ryder uh, during his right before he was confirmed or, or right after he was confirmed as mint director. My guess is they probably weren't implemented. He took the low route and decided, well, we'll just take out a missing read and that'll be it. Uh, because as you know, are probably aware that most people have been pretty disappointed with David Ryder's tenure as U.S. Mint Director. And he resigned probably because he knew that he was not up to the task. Yeah. You know, let me ask you this. And you're going to know a lot about this compared to me for sure, because I, I try to dive in a little bit to the United States Mint giving us information like in their in their news section uh try to see what they're willing to tell us it seems like you can never find information on their website you have to go through coin world in order to find out what's been going on yeah, is that right does the does the united states mint really just not put out information to the public except for through uh some of these private places um it's it's very kind of discombobulated if i can use that term am i do i have your permission you're not going to edit that out uh, hit the uh, discombobulated right there as much as you want this time. Thank right. you. All right. So what they do, they used to put out press releases on their website exclusively. And uh, they would they would also, through FOIA requests um, or through interviews by publications such as Coin World and Numismatic News um, or um, Coin Update or some of these other uh, magazines, and they would uh, provide statements through them. 
but they have gone on to more using social media platforms, mainly Twitter and Facebook. Uh, there is where you're going to get the news first uh, before anywhere else. But even there, they don't post news, um, some news there. Sometimes it has to be pulled out of them by a, a good reporter at Coin World um, or some other news agency, numismatic news agency. Um, so it is discombobulated because they don't have consistent messaging in all those platforms. And they should have consistent messaging in all three areas. Um, in other words, their website should be the de facto uh, because not, there's not everybody has Facebook. You know, there's a lot of people that don't have Facebook. They don't want to get on Facebook. Not everybody wants Twitter. Um, and uh, so to me, anything they do, they should have the consistent messaging and keep it on all the platforms. And obviously if there's something that they don't necessarily want out there, the small little details, just like is the case with any organization, I can understand that. And it may take a FOIA request to get that information. Obviously, that kind of stuff you're not going to see on, on the U.S. Mint's website or any other government website for that kind of thing. It's kind of sad that you just can't get news just easier from, from them. I don't know. I don't know. I, it is. I agree. I get very sad when I talk about the United States men, because I don't have a whole lot of great things to say about them. And it's sad because, you know, that's, that's my home office, so to speak. You know what I mean? The United States men, I want to, you know, support them. I want to get products from them, but a lot of times their products are lackluster, their services, their packaging is, and it's getting worse and worse. It seems like, and uh, I don't know, it's just very disheartening. It sure is. Like, you know, for instance, I can understand. I remember one time I was at the mint store in Washington, D.C. after they had raised their prices somewhat. And the guy there at the store was very open about some of these topics. And he says, hey, you know, we've got to keep up with manufacturing costs. We've got to, you know, and so prices are going to go up. And I was like, you know, I, I told him, I said, you know what? I agree for some of this stuff. Others things seems like the prices increase is a little bit much, but I can understand there's a lot that goes into uh, the product and the packaging and the like. But what we've seen in 2021 and 2022 is extreme price increases. And not only that, but the quality has gone down, especially with the packaging. The quality has decreased and prices have increased some as much as double as what you were paying before for some products. It just doesn't make sense. I would like to know why. I would like to know what's what's involved in this. You know, I mean, I'm all for uh, businesses making money. And and by the way, the United States Mint is unique in that it is one of the few federal agencies that actually makes money. And any profits they make go into the general revenues of the Treasury. So, uh, but the thing is, is Edmund C. Moy, when he's a former director of the U.S. Mint, he said that that profit that goes in the Treasury. Is a, is a molecule in a drop in the bucket of the overall uh, money and revenue that comes into the, it comes into the, uh, to the treasury every year. Oh. You know, we're record revenues of the, coming into the treasury. Uh, and even with that, we have deficit spending. We have a, a debt that's over $30 trillion. So anything that the United States mit, makes, any profits they make is literally a molecule in a drop of a, of a bucket of, of, of the entire revenue that comes in. And so when you think about that, why raise prices that much? What, what is going on? Inflation is affecting everybody, but the rate of increase in the prices that started last year, by the way, dramatic price increase in last year. Uh, I just don't understand it. And I would like to understand it because then if we don't get an explanation, then people like you and me are going to get jaded and think, what the heck is going on? And, uh, you know, with, with the U.S. Mint in that regard, with the prices. Maybe what they should do, since we're just a molecule, is they should just really, really increase prices like to the moon so that we're really significant. Uh, you know, <laughs> do you think we, they should do that instead of an eagle being, I don't know what it is now, $40? They should make an eagle go ahead and uh, be like $120. Would that help them, you think? It may be so. But, <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I tell you, there was a controversy uh, last year. Uh, when they started raising these prices, an uncirculated eagle went for $67. And 
And immediately some of these big pumper channels are saying, oh, the Silver Eagle for six to seven dollars. And, uh, and it was like you know, they didn't. It was for the collector version of the Eagle. It wasn't for a raw Eagle. It wasn't for one of these, even though it may look like one of these in, in, in the collector form that comes with the box and everything with the W mint mark. You know, this doesn't have the W mint mark. And that's what the cost was. And of course, people were misinterpreting that. Um, and I think it was quite humorous that that was so misinterpreted by some of these people. But uh, nonetheless, now we see $67 for a, an uncirculated Silver Eagle. And that's not that far off from what people are paying. Uh, they're paying $40 for a Silver Eagle these days. So it's we're not that far away. So, yeah. Yeah, it's Might wild. Make it go for the people out there that are like, uh, like, okay, like I don't understand what they're talking about, like with the whole packaging thing. This is a uh, piece from the Germanium Mint. Have you seen these right here, the Knights of Malta? Oh yeah, beautiful piece. So, yeah, yeah, beautiful piece. You know, it's got all the bells and whistles. It has nice art on it. Um, there's no milking done underneath this capsule as of yet. Uh, real good all the way around. And then it comes in this nice little, you know, quality just package you can put right there in your desk i'm gonna pop this back in but i mean look at this thing it's it's like amazing if the artwork's cool on this it has a nice certificate that comes with it and then you can put this all together and you can sit this on your desk and this is a nice little showpiece right here and i think i paid maybe like just under 60 for this thing right here and at the time i was like man that's kind of expensive yeah you got one too you know quality when you see it mine's a little yeah. dust there might be a little dust on the bottle but don't let it fool you about what's inside that's right, exactly. I can play that on guitar, by the way. Just a second. Yeah, man, hit it, hit it. I'll uh, I'll get one of my instruments. What do I got here? I got the the jaw harp. <laughs> Let's see here. What's in here? A metal guy so don't tell anybody i did that <laughs> all right <laughs> all right where were we that was good <laughs> but yeah you're right quality good quality stuff from the germanium mint wonderful packaging for sure and that's one example i mean perth mint's great uh, the other mints are private mints are just phenomenal um i want to shift gears a little bit you know i've been putting out some information lately about fakes uh, because people have been sending them to me uh, not because they're trying to pull the wool over my eyes but for you know they messed up they made mistakes they they bought on impulse rather than doing any kind of research uh, got from some less in reputable places and they got had so to speak and they've been sending me these fakes but um, <clears throat> besides those besides talking about the videos that I've made what do you think about this right here and all these fakes when we used to we used to do this right here in the United States Yes, death to that? counterfeit. Do you what do you think that that was kind of harsh? You think that was too much? Uh, well, at the time, it was it was a national security threat, and in fact, uh, our our enemies did that. They tried to flood um, um, the the market with fake currency to to dilute it, and um, of course, obviously, you know, Continental Congress could not survive, you know, with uh, with money that was worthless, and um, so that's that's why it was done. In this day and age, um, you know, it's a lot of these fakes are coming from um, from China. And obviously there's a long span. Our, our laws are not applicable there, uh, but uh, but trade is. And and I think when you have a country uh, that uh, is bleeding out all of these fakes coming in over into our nation, there's ways to put pressure on them. And I think you do that through trade and through international relations. Because, um, you know, and and we've seen uh, pressure, real pressure put on China during the last administration. And I think uh, we could see that again, too. In fact, even one of the things that was talked about was intellectual property rights. And that's exactly one thing uh, is, is when you think in terms of, you know, fake coins, fake Morgan dollars. In fact, I mean, even the, even currency, there's what's known as the super note, uh, what's called a super note that the North Koreans have made $100 bills. This is before the newest version of the $100 bill came out uh, with the enhanced security features, but that they were creating believable copies 
of hundred dollar bills. Um, and, and it's crazy, but yeah, yeah. So I think, I think in terms of that, there's ways to do it, but obviously I think death is probably a little out of the equation now, especially for collectible coins. The United States mint doesn't care about, I mean, the United States government really could care less if a, if a fake Morgan dollar comes over, um, and screws you over on, on your, as being a collector, you know, now if in terms of, of actual currency that's used day to day, Secret Service are very, very um, um, concerned about that. Now, there is some concern over the fake Morgans and stuff like that that are in the country. I and mean, they've actually investigated the Omega, was known as the Omega counterfeiter. He put his initials on the St. God's coins. Um, you know, I don't know if you've ever heard that case or not, but. Um, uh, the Omega Man coins, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And so there's cases like that where they get high profile enough, they'll, they'll take, but these, these fake, I mean, the, these ads are all over Facebook and your friend who got hoodwinked on the 2022 Silver Eagle. I've covered some videos on some of those websites and we'll probably continue to do that because I think people need to be aware um, when those kind of things come out and, and it's insane and people will fall for them. You know, yes, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's people that are not educated. They're trying to jump into the hobby and they're not really doing the research first. And that happens, I think, in every hobby that's ever existed. People, they go in too deep before they've really learned what's going on. But um, as far as death to counterfeit, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that the Japanese did this um, uh, around, uh, didn't they do it to Hawaii? Uh, they were going to flood Hawaii with, uh, with uh, just fake currency. In order to really screw up their, you know, their economy. Yes, I, I probably so. Would not surprise me if that was one of the tactics tactics they used. And I believe that's why they made that special Hawaiian note um, to try to counterfeit or not to counter, but counteract that. Right. That. But you know, you think about it, um, like yeah, you know, cruel and unusual punishment, death to counterfeiter. That seems like such an insignificant thing to to kill somebody for. You know what I mean? But right. Think about this way, uh, somebody floods you with fake bills, right? Now you have them. You are unaware of them being fake. You're going to try to pay your 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 salary, your bills you have, your your groceries, trying to take care of your family, and you get to the point where you're not going to be able to if it's if there's a bunch of fake bills in your hand, right? You're not gonna nobody's gonna take them. They're oh these are these are fake. They're no use to me. They're worth nothing. And now you can't feed your family. You can't keep a roof over their head. Um, you start to endanger your you know family because you can't pay for it if, if, if counterfeiting got so serious like that. And so you wonder, man, is death really, is that out of the question? <laughs> well, you know, serious I'll take it a step further. I'll take it a step further. There's some people that feel that what we are doing with modern monetary theory with quantitative easing is legal counterfeiting. You think about it, this dollar bill um, has lost almost 8% of its value by the official measurement of the consumer price index from last year. It is worth less now than it was then. And even then it was worth less than it was the year before. Their target is 2.5%. And many people feel that the United States government, and I know this sounds like an oxymoron because if they can do it, it's legal, but it is in a sense legal counterfeiting every time they produce these, these notes um, uh, at a measure above and beyond to the tune of, I think, 80% more of the M2 money supply this but in the last two years than all of, 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 uh, of the history of the Federal Reserve note since 1913. It's, it's crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> Legal counterfeiting, huh? Acceptable counterfeiting. Acceptable counterfeiting, yeah. Now, you ever just have some pieces on your desk? Like, just you sit there and these are just like desk pieces? Oh yeah, I do. I've got uh, I've got this that I like to play with. In fact, I was watching a, a movie today, and I have a little little platinum maple leaf here that I like to play with. I love the platinum maple leaves because they are the smallest diameter bullion coin. Same thing with the gold; it's the same uh, diameter as the or thirty millimeters um, as the uh, as the for the gold maple leaf. So this is the platinum maple leaf. And I like this because it's just solid. It's a, platinum is a harder metal than gold, less likely to get dinged up or, or dented. So I like to play with that. I've got, um, uh, I've got these are just desk pieces, right? They just stay in your desk. You just kind of look yeah, at them. Yeah, yeah. Sit in my desk. We've got that copper piece. Um, I have 
couple of other, I have some of the things that I showed last week that I didn't want to pull out again. Some of the poor pieces that I had, because I'm going to do something a little bit different this time, but some of what you see here, this bar here, this, this poor bar I keep nearby. And uh, how about you? What is this, what you have is your desk pieces as well. Uh, some of this stuff is desk stuff. Some of the stuff I just pulled out, but I, I start to think about like my desk pieces and not, not to brag at all. That's not, never my, my job here, but you start to add up some value just in your head real quick. You're like, okay, well there's, you know, 10, 20, 30 ounces and stuff. You're like, man, I have hundreds of dollars just sitting here like on my desk, <laughs> kind of at right. risk. You know what I mean? Probably not yeah. the best story, but at the same time, sometimes man, you get things and you're like, you're like, man, I, I bought these. I want to, I want to touch them. I want them to be in front of me. I want to look at them. I don't want to just hide them away forever. Exactly. No, I'm completely with you on that. I'm a very tactile person. I like to touch things, you know what I mean? And, oh, that's cool, man. Oh, that's your BAR. Isn't that Sweet. cool? Pennsylvania, that is nice. Who did that for you? This was done by Rare Metal on um, Instagram. He's an Instagrammer. Wow. You know, I got the actual real version of this, and I was like, man, wouldn't it be yeah. cool to have over version? That is cool, man. That is awesome. Yeah, heck yeah. I've got um, shoot, another thing I've got that somebody poured for me is this yeah. silver branch oh. from um, Plumber Stacker. Oh, yeah, I got one of those, too. And I just uh, had re released a video, uh, well, way back. I released that video way back on March the 27th, you know. Um, oh, look at that. Nice. Yeah, you got one, too. Sweet Home, Pennsylvania. Nice. It's fun what some of these ladies and gentlemen do right here on the uh, with the old porch stuff, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it sure is. Here's another little fun piece I got. Got a little silver kitty. Oh, and like it. Oh, nice. Sweet. You have a silver yeah. cat? Kalishnikov. You have heard of silver cat? Yeah, I haven't seen him in around, around in a while. Did he do that one? No, that was the uh, same guy, Rare Metal, on that one. Okay. This was, uh, he, he did some videos back in the day. He's kind of been more porn than I think doing videos. Um, right. From Mini Hooney, Stacker? Oh, yeah, Manny Huni. Oh, yes, he's amazing. Oh, yeah. He's out of Hawaii. This is ridiculous what he's had to do here. Yeah. It That's never gets cool. the appreciation, unfortunately. Like, all the poured stuff, it never gets the appreciation it, it deserves. You have people that come by and they go, like, oh, silver is silver. You just got to buy it for the spot price. <laughs> right, right. Here's Who, one of Abra Abraham Lincoln. Oh, he was a good old man. Yeah, I don't know um, who actually did this one, but this is um, a gift that was sent from me by D Wings some time ago. But yeah, pretty That's wild good. stuff. Just have stuff on the desk. Oh yeah. Have you ever, you ever got any uh, any silver and crystal form? Look at these. Oh yeah, no, um, I've seen it, but I've never actually gotten it. I know this. Uh, guy named silver mac who creates silver crystals and yeah look at that that is cool i picked this up but wow man, it's cool stuff man it is it is and that's just it precious metals is about you know enjoying what you what you stack you know there's a there was a guy on here some time ago whose motto was buy what you buy buy what you like and like what you buy and um, and I think if you're going to have something that is going to be um, under the guise of of a savings or wealth preservation, you might as well enjoy it too. If it's a, if it's a hard asset like this, yeah, for sure. Um, anything on, on the horizon like that's on your mind that like you're like, man, you know, I I really want this coin or this piece of silver or gold or anything like that. Anything that you've had your eyes on? Um. Well, uh, at the moment not really i'm i'm keeping my eyes out i like unique pieces i don't like just to buy um like one off so that like eagles just keep buying eagles gold eagles or what have you i've have more focus more on gold i guess i'm looking up for the next one ounce gold piece um that i would probably like to get i think as probably if i can swing it um because i have all of the american liberty gold coins except for the one in 2017. Um, so I think just to keep that collection up to date, that may be something, but that's a fairly high premium piece. 2017, 
Is that the black female? Yeah, that's a black female. Yeah. You don't have her? I don't have her yet. I've got a silver version of that, but I don't have the gold one yet. Do you have it? Yeah, yeah. You've got the gold version. Wow. Get okay. Can I get her real quick? Oh, yeah. Go for it. Yes. Yeah, keep me, the audience entertained for a second. Make me salivate. He's going to get this. He's going to rub it in my face. He's going to pull it right up to the camera here, folks, momentarily. Something that I don't have. Actually, at the beginning, I really wasn't keen on the design. She looked a little bit angry. But uh, now after seeing it on, on in person and also in images, it, it's not quite as, she doesn't look quite as angry, but I, I, it would be nice to have it as part of the collection. I have the silver verse, but not the gold version that Spectacular is gonna show us here in a moment, but right, it so is wonder, it's cool. And I like the eagle on the back of it too. But uh, yes, so we'll see what he's got. Here. A very beautiful eagle on it for sure. Let me let me scoot some metal over here. It needs all needs right. Some... Um, let's go back to packaging from the United States Mint again for a moment. Yes, uh, you know whatever you have gotten real recently from the United States Mint, bring it out and compare their packaging right now to this right here. Only a few years ago, mind you. Yep. So already I've taken one sleeve off. Has an outer sleeve. The box even feels nice, Sal. So. Has like a uh, velvet feel. Nice beautiful. gold water. Nice. Got some inside in case you know some some jumbling was to happen. And then look at this. You get this nice booklet. That is awesome. Yeah, I'd like to love to get one of those. Yep. Hear about opening the book too much because you know what I mean. You start messing with the binding of it, so I don't right. really get into it too deep. But I mean, it's like it's beautiful. It's all yeah. beautiful. And then you got more padding right here because you don't want to scratch up the nice, beautiful box. Look at this thing. This is a face awesome. reveal box. Oh, yeah, it sure is. Look at that. And in case you can't quite get your fingertips in like this, just look at that. It has a nice little, you know, Star Wars style, like a little uh, drop off right there. Yeah. That. Well, we're going to take it out of this. Hold on. Boom. It's just amazing the difference in packaging. I mean, they went through some trouble here just designing the packaging. Oh, yeah, they sure did. Yep. More, it's got a pillow right here in case you know what I mean. It needs to, you know, really relax at night or something like that. Yeah, to keep it in place there. Yeah, look at that. Wow, this is beautiful, beautiful presentation. Right. Here we go. Oh, and then she goes on the pillow if you want her on the pillow. But yeah, it's actually a very, very pretty coin. Nice. Got some schmutz on the capsule. You know, it happens over age, right? A little schmutz. Right. Yep. Did you buy that directly from the mint at the time? I did not. So um, the coin guy that I do videos with, uh, he got several of these in and gave me a, like a, just a stellar price on these sounds. Wow. Nice. They might have been like $100 over spot at the time. And of oh, course, that's incredible. Way, yeah. Way north now, whatever it was that I bought it you know, for. Yeah, my LCS had one, but this, I just couldn't stomach paying what they were asking for it. But that is beautiful. Wow. Very nice. You'll get one. Do you yeah. find yourself as a collector that you're almost waiting for something to show up? Like, there's not stuff like from the past. That you're like, oh, I really would like to get that coin from the past. You're more of like, I wonder what new stuff is coming out. And then as you see it, the new stuff, you're like, oh, I got to have that. One. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's that's definitely. Um, and this series has really interested me from its inception in 2015. And I really, really like the 2015 version. I have several of those. Uh, and I've gotten recently the 2019 version. Of course, obviously the uh, the Mustang, the bucking horse, the bucking you know that's the latest one. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely um, with you on that. I, I like to see what's new coming out. And um, and this coin here, I just uh, couldn't afford it at the time. And actually, I did I think I did have one chance to buy a raw version of it at really close to spot at a coin show, but it was. It was just a capsule. It didn't have any of the packaging. What you can get the packaging, you can order that on eBay, no problem. But uh, yes, that's the one I need. And you've made me <laughs> rule sufficiently to now be on a quest again to find it. But I, I, I don't want to spend. You can still get them from directly from the Mint's website, but they're like almost three three grand, I think now, if I'm not mistaken. Ooh, it's just, uh, and the thing is, these are higher mintage. Higher mintage, and um, I bought another one of the 2019s from SD Bullion because they had them at a great price, very good price. They got really good deals on those, and they're much lower mintage, much okay. lower. Ten pounds version of her? 
I don't have the they have the ten thousand ver- version is out there, but I wanted to get the the, the one ounce version. But I know yeah. the ten thousand ver- tenth ounce version is out there too. Yeah. Do you have you, that one? No, I don't have the tenth. Um, I really want to get that buffalo too. I really I was I was lazy on that man. I I want to go back, but they are asking for a lot on that darn buffalo. Uh, maybe yeah, one the day. proof buffaloes are beautiful. I've got one from uh, in two thousand and ten. Those 2010 buffaloes are very nice, and there are very little. They were very little over spot. Uh, in fact, you could get some of the proof buffaloes for the same price as a regular buffalo for a while there. You can't do that anymore now, but uh, but yeah, boy, that's nice. Yeah, I do very like nice. Her. You ever get into the classic stuff? Edge lettering too, buddy. Yep, edge lettering. That's right. That's the 225th anniversary. It says there on the, on the side sure. there. You ever get to the classic uh, gold, like the uh, um, double eagles and stuff? Oh yeah, I've got some of that stuff too. Not a whole lot of it, but I've I've, I've got a you know the Indian, uh, the incused in, or not technically the sunken relief Indians, and the uh, I don't have any of the dollar coins though. But do you get into any of that or have any of that? That's uh, some of my favorite stuff. <clears throat> yeah. Nice. I think it's just so interesting that 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 stuff has survived for a hundred plus years, and yes. uh, you know, and sometimes the the almost flawless condition. Uh, it's just amazing to me. I, oh. that's, that, that's my little place of heart right there is those kind of coins. But I still love this right here too. I, I understand the the uh, collector's value and the the just the overall neatness of coins like this. I love it. Right. Oh yeah. Pretty amazing. And there's Anything- something. Something about a rare coin, too. And, you know, people often, the misnomer is that rare coins are um, going to instantly be valuable, but that doesn't mean that that is the case. You know, there's there's some coins that are so rare, people forget about them. Yeah. Um, and, and it defeats the purpose of their collectability. But there's something about having something that not many other people have, I think is really, really cool. Like I've got the uh, 2020 Swan with a mintage of 188, you know, and it's probably not going to be worth a whole lot numismatically down the road, but uh, just the fact there's only 187 other people that have one of those coins is kind of a cool thing, you know? Isn't that wild that you can get a coin like that? And, uh, you know, it, it, you really, like, when you first get them, if you get them at the right time, they're not overpriced. I mean, right, you get them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, that's what I did with my, uh, my Lord of the Rings gold piece. That's only right. And uh, technically right now, I think it's only $50 over spot that I paid or so. It's, it's barely wow. over. Uh, kind of crazy that stuff. But, you know, it's not like the classic coins where they survived for 100 years and they were meant to be used. And they weren't at most of the time they weren't collector's items. They were like, hey, man, you know, this is money. This is very important stuff right here. Like $20 was a big deal. You know, those double right. eagles. A lot. And uh, people needed that to survive. Indeed. Indeed. Wow. Well, Sal, listen, this is number three, man. We've done it. This is uh, this is really cool. Um, I know you have a live show that you uh, like to do around a little bit later than this. And you got to prepare for that. So um, appreciate you coming and hanging out. And um, anything you got to add before we go? No, thank you. This has been fun. Time flies. And it's always good uh, conversing with you and talking precious metals and 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 everything that's involved with it and i appreciate it again i can't tell you um and i'll probably say this with you with each episode it is huge honor and i appreciate you having me and and again you've done so such a wonderful job with your channel and congratulations on all your success and i just appreciate you um allowing me to take part and so thank you again a multitude of gratitude to you and to everyone else for watching as well Absolutely. Anybody that wants to catch uh, uh, Sal on his channel, definitely check him out because he's got the best lives that you'll find. It's, uh, you know, funny and entertaining and educational, um, all combined in one nice live show. Um, oh, so- well, thank you. But your lives are awesome, too, man. You've got some good stuff with your lives. I don't do them very often, though. You, you're pretty regular about yours. I do mine very sporadically. I give nobody any kind of heads up. I just go, ah, it's that time. <laughs> there you go. Hey, sometimes spontaneous is the way to go. But if you want consistency, check out Salivate Metal. And um, also, if you are interested in the other episodes, maybe you're only catching episode three. Maybe, um, you know, you want to see the whole series. And hopefully we can do some more of these, Sal. Uh, You know, as long as we're alive to do them, we don't get, uh, you know, I don't know, stomped on by life. 
Um, I, I have yep. a whole going to be on my my channel. Uh, so definitely check out the playlist tab on um, on Spectacular's channel here, and uh, check out all the episodes of the uh, the Metals Experience and see what we're doing and just talking about. It's just two guys talking about coins and precious metals and just what we're thinking at the time. All right. Thank you again, Speg. This is wonderful. Appreciate it. Looking forward to the next one. And I'm, I'm going to go now after uh, this is all done and after a few minutes and see you on your live. So Sal, thanks again. And uh, everybody, you just keep on being you. And Sal, give your outro to, to the people, please. A multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch. And I want to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe to Spectacular. All right. Bye-bye.